Hi, this is Bart Paulson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it, we're looking at the third of four online quizzes on Chapter 11, which is Correlation and Regression. The first question is, which of the following is true about regression towards the mean, uh, sometimes called regression to the mean? A, uh, one choice is that all of the answers are correct. B is that the predicted y values tend to be closer to the mean of y than the observed values of x are to the mean of x. Uh, C, the predicted y values will have less variation than actual observed values of y. And D, the predicted y values will not always be perfect unless r is equal to plus or minus 1. Well, um, in this case, the answer is A. All of these are correct, B, C, and D. And it all has to do with this particular formula right here. It, again, it's easiest to think about uh, correlation and regression when you're dealing with z-scores. Um, regression towards the mean means that the predicted scores are less extreme than all of the others. And it's really easy because what we have right here is this, um, this equation where you start with everybody's z-score on y, and then you multiply it times the correlation coefficient. And unless the correlation is a perfect plus or minus 1, the z-scores on x are going to be smaller because the correlation will be less than 1. It will be closer to 0, so everything's going to end up smaller. And so you have less variation on the z-scores on x, which also means that they're closer to their mean, which also means that things are not predicted perfectly. All of those because the nature of correlation is that correlation is usually not a perfect plus or minus 1. All right, number two, when people who score low on one variable tend to score low on another variable, then those two variables, A, are negatively correlated, B, are positively correlated, C, have a significant main effect, and D, have a significant main interaction. The answer is A, they're positively correlated. Now, negatively correlated means that if you're low on one, you're high on the other, and vice versa, if you're high on one, you're low on the other. Significant main effect and interaction actually come from the analysis of variance, and they're not relevant to what we're doing right here. But um, here's you know the chart again. We what I've circled on the bottom is the three positive correlations from the 04, which still kind of looks like a blob, to the 08, which is pretty clean, to the 1.0, which is a perfectly straight line. Those are all correlated, and they all go from the bottom left to the top right. So people are low on both x and y or they are generally higher on both x and y. Number three, if x and y in a regression equation are both expressed as z-scores, so z sub x and z sub y, then the correlation between and the correlation between the two variables is r equals 0.3, then what's the predicted value of z sub y when z sub x is one, excuse me, is negative 1.2? The choices are negative 0.36 or 3.6 or negative 1.23 or can't be determined without additional information. The answer here is negative 0.36 and here's, here's how it works. All you need is the short little z-score version of the um, regression equation and you just plug in the values that we have. We have a z-score for x of um, negative 1.2. So I put that in at the far right. We have a correlation between x and y of 0.3. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's the correlation is based on the z-scores or on the raw scores because it's identical. Um, and then it's 0.3. And just multiply those two numbers. 0.3 times minus 1.2 is equal to minus 0 0.36. And that's our z-score on the y variable. Okay, the fourth question is, if x and y in a regression equation are both expressed as z-scores, so z sub x and z sub y, then what can never happen? And the choices are z sub x is greater than z sub y, or b, z sub y is greater than 1, or c, z sub y is greater than z sub x, or d, z sub x is equal to z sub y. And um, I know it's confusing, I'm not trying to be tricky, just trying to make it so you pay attention and think about what you're doing here. The answer is C, that Z sub Y can never be greater than Z sub X. And here's how that works. Um, 
Now, z sub x can be greater than z sub y. Yeah, that, that's uh, part of the regression to the mean equation. Z sub y can be greater than 1. Well, z scores can be greater than 1. You know, it's correlation coefficients in R squared. Those are restricted to 1, but, but z scores can be greater. And then uh, this, the one on the bottom, z sub x is equal to z sub y. Yeah, yeah that can happen. Um, if they're both 0. Um, or if you have a perfect correlation coefficient. But anyhow, the answer to this question is C, and it has to do with the regression to the mean thing, which is best explained through the z-score version of the regression equation. And we got z sub x on the far right. Those are the predictors. Those are based on the variable x, but they're standardized. And we're trying to predict the z-scores on y. But the thing in between, the, the thing that we multiply the z sub x by is is the correlation between the two. And because correlations can never be greater than 1, uh, pl plus 1 or minus 1, then the resulting z-score can never have a greater value than the uh, original z-score. Now, this is only for standardized scores. For z-scores, if you're using raw scores, you know, obviously, if they're on different scales, you can have bigger things. But if they're standardized, then the z-score for y can never be greater than the z-score for x because the correlations are never greater than positive 1 or less than negative 1. In fact, they're usually smaller and closer to 0. All right, number 5. If a person has a middling score on x but a very high score on y, what would their effect on the aggression equation be? And the choices are they would raise the intercept but not change the slope, or B, they would raise the intercept and raise the slope, or C, they would not change the intercept but they would raise the slope, and D, there would be, well, they would no predictable effect on either the intercept or the slope. Please ignore the typos. The answer to this one is A, they would raise the intercept but not change the slope. And, you know, here's how it works. Now, the uh, I showed you these before. The one on the left, the big red dot in the middle, is it has a very middle value on both x and y. The one on the right, now, the, I realize the question is about what if uh, we had a very high score on y. This one has a very low score on y. But what you see is it drags the... Um, it drags the line down. So if it's in the middle, it tends to push the regression line up or down. And that's what's going on. Anyhow, that's it for the third quiz, and I'll see you in a minute for the fourth.